Guys, I think I hit a home run right here with this little project. Yes, you did, Popo. Guys, this is a, a fun little project, and Colton is really enjoying it. So y'all hang on and see what I did. Guys, so far that's the best toy go-kart that Papa's built. You can actually turn that one down to where it won't go too fast. Coach has just turned four years old. And that's with the Predator 212 cc motor on it with a 30 series torque converter clutch. Well, good morning, guys. How are y'all today? Guys, I'm in the shed today. Working on a little project here I've been working on for a few weeks now. I just come out here and piddle with it a little at a time. But this project here, first I'm going to tell y'all a story of how this come about. A couple of months or so ago, I put on Facebook that I wanted, has anybody got an old go-kart frame? Cause I had a little Predator engine that I'd bought brand new and put on my pa-in-law's old tiller. And that old tiller, it was a rear time tiller and it was about 30 years old. Well, I put the motor on a tiller where the tiller didn't make it through the first year and it stripped the gears out in the rear end. And I was gonna try to fix it just because it was my pa-in-law's. But it was so old, I couldn't even get it took apart. It done basically rusted and crudely together. So I had that motor, this Predator motor right here, been sitting out here and I just crank it ever so often, keeping it running. So I thought one day, I said, man, if I get me an old go-kart frame, put that little motor on that go-kart frame, me and Colton have something to play on. Well, guys, I ended up with three go-karts and this little mini four-wheeler here. Well, the first go-kart I ended up with, I'll pop you a picture up right here on it. I think I did do a video of installing the clutch and new chain on it. And I was using this motor on that go-kart at the time. I put this motor on that go-kart, new go-kart clutch, new chain, new brake shoes, and we call that the Thunder Cart. Well, the motor that was on the Thunder Cart, I pop a picture up here because I can't even pronounce the name. It was a more expensive motor that was on that go kart. Well, after I got that go kart running, I took that motor, got a new carburetor for it, and got it running. Well, a lady. Called one night, she said, I got a go-kart behind my house. You can come get it. <laughs> well, guys, I went and got it, and I got videos on it of what I did. It's one of them big adult go-karts. And you, If you're into go-karts and building them, you may want to go watch that video. I stripped the motor off of it, stripped it down, and I had another motor that was off of a tiller that a man gave me that was tore up. I thought I was going to fix that tiller as a project, but after I got to looking at how much the sprockets and all cost, and I already got a little tiller, I said, I ain't, I don't even need to do that. So again, got that little motor running, converted it over on that adult go-kart, so then we had two go-karts. A big go-kart and a little one. Well, a few days later, a man pulled up my driveway out here and had a trailer. He had this little mini ATV on it, and he had another old go-kart frame. Of course, neither one of them running. And actually, I didn't even try to get this ATV running, because it had been sitting out in the rain. Wires was all tore off of it. Well, that go-kart that he had brought, it was... Done been wrecked, so I had a little work to do on it. So I put the motor that was on the 
Thunderbolt go-kart after I rebuilt it. We call it Bumblebee. I throw a picture up here. It's black and yellow. Put that motor on it. And so we had three go-karts at that time. And I kept looking at this here. I said, Colton would really enjoy riding this. He can ride this before I let him ride a go-kart. A go-kart to me is a little dangerous because they're so low. And what I'm worried about is they run up under something, even though it's got the little roll bar cages on it. So I decided one day I was going to do away. We didn't need two little go-karts. Plus, they about to kill Papa's back riding him bouncing around on them. So I decided one day I was going to fix his ATV. So what I did, I took the motor off the Thunder Cart, and that's this Predator 212cc. I took the motor back off the yellow go-kart and put it back on the Thunder Cart, because that's the one it came on. I think it's a little better motor than this Predator myself. So I put it back on that go-kart. And then I had this Predator motor. So that's how we came about this. Now I wished I'd have took a picture before I started. Here's the plastics off of it. I done painted them a pretty blue color. This thing was a purplish color, but it done been sitting so long out in the sun for years, it was just faded away. So I got my plastics all painted. And I went to looking at some videos on doing this. There's a lot of videos out there. People converting these over. But most of them, I would say younger adults. And when they do it, they don't put the plastics back on them. They just got their seat and their frame here. They just want something to run and play on. Well, I want this one to look like a little four-wheeler. And there's some things I learned when doing this that I want to point out in case you ever want to do this. And that's the reason I'm doing this video. I ain't doing a step-by-step -step building it, but I'm going to show you what I did and some things that I learned from watching other videos that kept me from running into the same issues they had. Now, I also have a video on how to clean a rusty fuel tank. And this is the little tank I was cleaning in that video, and that's been several weeks ago. Like I said, this has just been a little project I work on a little at a time. But some of the things I want to point out that will help you if you want to do this, to not do something and then realize you shouldn't have done that first. And there's two ways you can do this. You can use a torque converter clutch or you can use like I just call it an old style go-kart clutch. If you use the old style go-kart clutch, your chain therefore is going to be a longer chain and you'll see when I get this around showing y'all more in detail and stuff. But also for a kid to be riding it, it's better to have the torque converter clutch because they're going to be going slow, stopping and taking off to where a go-kart clutch is better for when you get started, you just stay moving, you ain't stopping and going and stuff. So I chose the Series 30 torque converter clutch and I got it from Amazon and guys anything that you see me doing I have a, a link in the description below this video showing you the exact clutch I'm using but let's get into some things that I want to point out in case you want to do this that'll save you a little trouble now one of the things if you're going to mount a Predator 212cc or any other cc motor the majority of them out there is using these 212 Predators from Harbor Freight because they reasonable priced and they are pretty good engines. But when you get this engine, right here is the breather. Well, here's the breather off of the one that wasn't running. And see how high that would set up? And when I first put it on there, I was going to leave it like that. And I did cut my fender to go over it when I put my plastic on. But when he sits on it with his seat, that means his leg's going to be riding across, across the top of that breather. So my plan that I did, you can buy stuff, but I'm like, I'm one that likes to make stuff. I took the breather since I had two of them. I knew I could play with one. And I cut it off right here. Then I took a, mounted it back on there. 
and I took a three quarter inch PVC L, a three quarter PVC pipe, and another three quarter PVC L. You can take a heat gun and heat that L at PVC, and it'll mold to the shape of that hold in top of this air filter here, where the air filter was, I mean. And then I glued that in with 100% silicone. I set my plastics back on there to see where my fenders and stuff was. And then on this end, I took the top portion of this air filter that, where I done cut the top off and done the same thing. Drilled the hole a little bit bigger in the bottom of it. Silicone that on there. Plus, I put a drilled a little hole and put a little screw into this PVC pipe. And I built a bracket right here. It's just made out of a little L bracket because this little bracket right here was already on the frame of the ATV. And that's fast in there. That ain't going nowhere. Now, when it comes time to clean your filter, it's going to be a little hard to get up under there and get your filter out to clean it. But if I needed to, I could take the plastics back off because it ain't but four or five screws that hold the rear fenders back on there. So my point of all of this is, is when you start setting your engine, pay attention to where this is going to be and what you have a plan, what you're going to do. Because when I started out, down here on the bottom, and I'm one that just uses materials I have. This is a metal plate. That's a two-inch square tubing. That wasn't even in my plans in the beginning, man. My plans in the beginning was to use just this plate down here on the bottom frame. Well, the motor would have sat in there good. The breather would have been lower and would have worked. And also, when we look at the other side, here's the big old exhaust that was on top of the motor on the other side, like this, where the breather is on this side. That would have been lower down, but his leg would have been right across the exhaust, so that wouldn't work. Even though the motor would have sat down there lower, here's something I'm going to point out to you that'll save you time and frustration. That's why I put this motor on and off several times before I sighted the well, what I was going to well down here to mount it to. And I just ended up welding one, two inch square tubing right down the center and then got the plate welded on top of it. But the reason you need to look at all this, one, decide if you're going with the go-kart clutch or two, if you're going with the torque converter clutch. Either way, you need them mounted on your motor before you set your motor on here and start adjusting where you're going to put the motor. And the reason being, when your chain goes back here to your rear sprocket, it's got to straddle this axle. And if that motor ain't just in the right place or the right height, you ain't going to have no space between there. And I've seen some of them do that, and they had to come in there and put a like a third tensioner pulley to try to hold her chain, or idler pulley, if you want to call it that, from hitting her axle, which was unnecessary. If they'd have just placed their motor and thought about what they was doing. But I almost made the same mistake by putting my mountain plate on first before I really got to looking at how everything was going to fit. Now, the fuel line, I did buy a new throttle cable because the existing one is still, still on the thumb, thumb throttle. You can see it working right there. I had to buy a longer cable. I'll put that in the description below this video. And right here is where the little arm was sticking out. Like if you use these motors on a tiller or something where you didn't have a throttle, you just cranked them and throttled them up. I cut that off. That way it wouldn't be sticking out here. And we'll get a closer look after we get it all together with our plastics on it. That'll be covered up. Even though this tank has one of them hidden screw-in fuel tanks, a lot of people don't know that, but just about all your tillers and stuff nowadays come with this little filter. It's replaceable. Take your tank off. 
you ever ain't getting no gas through your line, that little filter there is stopped up. But even though that filter is on there, I went on and put an inline filter and a cutoff valve. Now the Predator motor, which mine, I painted it black, so it's all black and hard to see. The Predator motors come with a gas cutoff valve right here. But I put one in line and it's easier to use. You can still use your on and off switch for the motor, but I'm gonna wire one up on the handlebars. I can use the existing one that come on this little ATV. So guys, that's a safety feature. If some reason this throttle cable broke and a little kid's riding it and it broke and it's going fast, what are they going to do? Well, if you put a kill switch up there on the handlebars like originally, then they can kill it. But that ain't nothing to it. All you got to do is put the little switch on the handlebar and hook the wire to this wire. Now, my lighting in here ain't good, so I just spun the table around so we could see this side. On a torque converter clutch, it runs off the belt. You'll sprock it for your chains way back here, so you can see how much that made the chain shorter. But if you go with the go-kart clutch, it mounts up here on the engine, you're going to have a long chain. So that's where you got to make sure you have on your motor what you want before you go putting the motor on so you can lay the chain up there and make sure it's going to go over and under your frame member there so you won't have to worry about your chain hitting on anything or having to come up with another solution after the fact. Now I left the original sprocket on here. Most of them bigger kids doing this or young adults, some grown ups. They put a bigger sprocket because you need more torque to take off. But this is for a little kid. So I think it's going to be just fine. So when I put my plastics on here, as I was saying earlier, to get my motor the height I wanted it so my chain wouldn't hit anything, then I couldn't even use this muffler if I wanted to because it's running halfway up the frame of the bike here which wouldn't have been good even if it would have worked because you don't want all that heat right here where the little kid's leg going to go over. So what I did, I took the, since I got two of these motors I can show you, this hair was mounted right on there like so, and then this was on top of it. So since I had two of these, and I wasn't worried about it, I could mess one up, I'd still have something else to go to. I cut this flange off. I took a piece of L pipe and I cut it, it had a crazy angle and I welded it to this flange. And then this is the, the muffler and parts of the pipe that was originally on this little UTV. So I just had to do a lot of piecing together. This is welded one, two, three times in order to get this to work right here and now that plastic now my plastic gonna get a little close I'm, i don't know what i'm gonna do there it might i may have to put a heat shield between it but either way the kid's leg ain't gonna be where he can touch no hot pipe it's gonna be hid because the plastic sticks out here with the foot plastics and stuff and y'all see that when we get it put together but this worked out great because the Exhaust already had a mountain bracket, and then there was a mountain bracket that it originally was bolted to. I just had to take a wrench and twist it around so I could stick a bolt through. And there's that. It ain't going nowhere. But my main point is, I just wanted to point out, is don't go welding no motor brackets, mountain brackets, until you get things set in there. I set that motor on and off there probably 10 times, trying different pieces of square tubing, different plates, different. I, I just wanted everything just right to where my chain wouldn't be worried about touching nothing. Plus I could come up with something with the air filter and I could come up with something for the pipe. Now these Predator engines on the air filters, you could actually buy 
It's called a stage one kit, which you change the jet in your carburetor and it changes, does away with your air intake breather and puts a little round like a K&N filter style. And that's what most of them do, but I didn't want to buy nothing. I like building stuff out of what I got. Just junk, I call it. The front brakes work good. Now the back brakes is something I'm gonna get have to get creative on, but I ain't worried about that till after I get the plastics on and stuff. Cause I'm gonna have to do some kind of something like I done here on this pipe here to get the brake paddle to go around and turn up to where he can push it. But I want to put the brake back on the back because it was working. It's just gonna be some creative welding, cutting and welding. And guys, I'd run out of wire from my Hobart wire welder. <laughs> but that little v bore MMA 200 little stick welder, that's what I welded this together with. It ain't the prettiest welds, but it don't leak. I do think I got a leak right here. I'm going to have to get me another exhaust gasket in order, because when I pull that off, even on both motors, you can see this in the golf gasket pulled apart. So I am going to have to get it, me a gasket and put me a new gasket behind it because I do have a little leak on my gasket right there. So at this point, I just give y'all a little close up. That way, if you need to pause it to see anything, if you're trying to build one of these, maybe get you under here where you can see how the motor mount and give you some ideas a lot of the videos they show them they done this but they don't show the details of what they did also if you're gonna go with a bigger sprocket you need to have that sprocket on there when you're trying to set your motor because that's going to change the angle of where that chain runs There's a shot from the back. Now this didn't have no cover on it when I got it. It had a cover once upon a time. It went right over the chain there and I may build, hand build something for the chain. I don't know. Kid can't really get into the chain. It's under the top fenders and all that. The brake was mounted right here. Like I said, I have it off. Cause the motor wouldn't go on here with the brake paddle because it come and turned up right here so what i'm gonna have to do is cut it bend it come up bend it weld it and have it up over here to where he can push his back brake because the back brake's the one he needs because right now a six or seven year old's hands ain't hardly big enough to reach up there see you got to have long fingers to even grab the brake and it's pretty hard even though the brakes work good so guys right now i'm gonna go through my little bucket of all the wiring and stuff i removed off of here find my kill switch mount it right back here on the handlebar like it was and get it hooked up and then i'm gonna start assembling my plastics And I'll come back and give y'all a shot of it. And we're probably going to get out there and ride it around a little bit. All right, guys. We are completed. The plastics is back on. The kill switch is back hooked up. Everything bolted up good. And I'll get y'all up close here and show you what it'll be. So as you can see, where the air breather is mounted now, and that's just piped over there with PVC pipe, three quarter inch pipe. And I can actually lift up on the fender and open that up and get the little foam out to clean it when it needs clean. Right here, I had to cut a hole. Actually, I cut this here and cut it wrong to begin with because that's when before I decided to repipe the breather. So I put a little piece here, but you had to leave this here open so your throttle would move and not be touching nothing. Plus, I can get to the throttle screw to adjust it where he can't go that fast, starting out. And 
Now some of the bolts is missing, so I just zip tied some of the plastics back on. Actually, I think they're tighter than they was when I got it. And on this side, what I did, the, where the exhaust right here was going to be close to that plastic, I just cut it out right there because that ain't even going to be nowhere close to his leg any closer than on any other ATV. Now, on both sides, the fenders was cracked right here, the foot panels, when I received this, so that's just going to be the way it is. But I'm going to get this little machine off this shelf right here, crank it up and give it a little first test run. I may be too heavy for it. I may have to walk along beside it, but anyway, I'm going to see what it'll do. So let's go see. All right, guys, we finna put the switch on run. Give it a little choke. So guys, I think that's going to be pretty good for coating. Now I can adjust the screw after I let him ride it with his weight because I don't want it going too fast. I'm going to have to order my exhaust gasket because it does have an exhaust leak, but I can change that out without having to remove anything. I'm going to put it back in the shop. I'm going to get the rear brake hooked up. I'm going to have to do some welding and stuff on that. Kind of do like on the exhaust pipe. Guys, I'm going to add this in. As you can see right here, where the brake comes up. I had to come over. I had to cut it right here. And I don't... I don't know if y'all can see, but it comes over and up. And then back up. So I had to do the brake paddle kind of like the exhaust to move it over to get it away from the engine. And right now, everything works great. The only thing that did happen, this bolt right here did strip off. If you're working on these, don't over tighten this bolt. But I just, at the time right now, I just put some stainless steel wire around it and tied it down. It can't move, it ain't going anywhere. Only other thing I could do would be tap that screw out and try to get another screw to put back in it. But the brakes is working good. Also, when you see me riding it, my weight pushed down and it was making the chain rub on this plastic, on this torque converter cover. I had to cut a little bit more out of that. But with Colton's weight, it wouldn't have affected anything. But I did go on and cut some of that out. So now it's a finished product. And coaching my man is having a good time. Thumbs up, Popo. Right here where his foot I go on it to get the rear brake. Now, like I said, it's got a front brake, but their little hands, they can't hardly grab that brake paddle and squeeze it hard enough to use. So I want him a rear brake hooked up. And this was a fun little project. This and the project on the big go-kart over there engine swap out i didn't show nothing much on the little go-karts because it just wasn't that much of a project but this and the big go-kart project i just enjoy doing stuff like this especially when i ain't in a hurry do a little bit a day at a time whenever i got time or ain't got nothing else to do i go in there and pill around a little while but if you enjoy these type videos and you ain't never subscribed, please reach down there and hit that subscribe button. It don't cost you a thing. Ring that notification bell, because Pop All's Place is a little bit about everything. You never know what you might see me doing out here. But guys, hope you enjoyed that. 
you did give me a thumbs up share my videos with your friends and loved ones that's the best way you can help me grow my youtube channel and i hope y'all have a great day and a blessed week god bless see y'all next time